When President John F. Kennedy declared, we choose to go to the moon, he was not just igniting the American imagination with dreams of space exploration. His words were a profound assertion of American ambition, technological determination, and a strategic vision to secure national leadership through innovation. Decades later, that spirit lives on, not only in space missions but also in massive, floating marvels of engineering like the United States ship John F. Kennedy, CVN-79, a next-generation aircraft carrier named in his honor. This colossal ship, the second in the Gerald R. Ford class of nuclear-powered supercarriers, is emerging at a time when warfare is being reshaped by advanced technologies, compact weapon systems, and asymmetrical threats. It raises a critical question. Can a vessel engineered to serve for over half a century keep pace with threats like hypersonic missiles, stealthy drone swarms, and orbital surveillance? Or is the United States ship John F. Kennedy destined to become a futuristic relic in just a decade? To find out, let's explore what makes CVN-79 both the behemoth of naval might and a potential answer to modern-day military challenges. Icons of Dominance and Power Projection Few weapon systems in modern history have been as transformative as aircraft carriers. Since Japan launched its first carrier in 1922, these vast ships have redefined naval warfare and emerged as central instruments of power projection. For the United States, Aircraft carriers became synonymous with military dominance during World War II and have continued to serve as the first line of response in crises around the globe. When conflict breaks out anywhere, the strategic question often becomes, where is the closest U.S. aircraft carrier? This enduring legacy has inspired successive generations of naval innovation, culminating in the construction of the Gerald R. Ford class carriers. These floating forces are not just enormous, they are some of the most common complex and expensive military platforms ever built. At over 1,100 feet in length longer than three NFL fields placed end-to-end -end and more than 250 feet wide, these vessels dwarf even the wingspan of a Boeing 747. They rise taller than the fairy tale like Neuschwanstein Castle in Germany, which once inspired Disney's iconic design. But what's most astonishing is their cost. The first of the class, the United States ship Gerald R. Ford, CVN-78, carried a price tag of nearly $13 billion, not including an additional $4.7 billion spent on research and development. Building a leaner, smarter supercarrier. Following the Gerald R. Ford, the United States ship John F. Kennedy, CVN-79, came with a reduced price approximately $11.3 billion. This cost efficiency wasn't achieved by compromising on firepower or performance, but through intelligent design optimization and technological refinement. While it traditionally took around five years to build the U.S. carrier, CVN-79 has taken longer due to its innovative nature. Construction began in 2009, and the ship is expected to be commissioned by the end of 2025. The wait, however, has not been in vain. The Kennedy is a technological leviathan brimming with innovations that elevate it far above its predecessors. Much of this prowess comes from its heart to a 1B nuclear reactors designed by Bechtel. These reactors are capable of generating 700 megawatts of thermal energy, a 25% increase over the 550 megawatts produced by the older Nimitz-class systems. This enormous power surplus does not just move the ship, it energizes a host of next-gen systems, including its revolutionary aircraft launching technologies. Electromagnetic aircraft launch system and advanced arresting gear systems. One of the most groundbreaking upgrades on the Kennedy is the electromagnetic aircraft launch system, which replaces the older steam-driven catapults. Using linear induction motors, electromagnetic aircraft launch system offers a lighter, more efficient, and less maintenance-intensive alternative to traditional systems. It also eliminates the need for cumbersome steam machinery below deck, freeing up space and reducing crew workload. This innovation dramatically reduces wear and tear on aircraft during launches, making it ideal for supporting the latest in unmanned aerial vehicles and stealth aircraft. Complementing electromagnetic aircraft launch system is the advanced arresting gear, a system that replaces traditional hydraulic arresting wires with electromagnetics. It allows the recovery of much lighter drones that would otherwise suffer damage or fail to land at all on older systems. 
With these two technologies in tandem, CVN79 is not just more efficient, it's more flexible, ready to launch a wide range of aircraft with minimal stress and maximum frequency. An expanding air wing for the future battle space. The Ford class carriers were designed to significantly expand the number of daily aircraft sorties. Thanks to electromagnetic aircraft launch system and advanced arresting gear, CVN79 can achieve up to 270 sorties per day an impressive leap from the 180 sortie capacity of the Nimitz class. Over prolonged missions, it is expected to average about 160 sorties per day, providing sustained air dominance in multi-theater operations. Although CVN78 currently accommodates between 75 and 90 aircraft, Kennedy was designed with ambitions to host as many as 100 aircraft, unmanned aerial vehicles, and helicopters, depending on mission requirements. Whether that target will be fully met on CVN79 or deferred to the third ship in the class, the United States ship Enterprise, CVN80, remains to be seen. Among the aircraft supported are the F-35 Lightning II, the F-A-18EF Super Hornet, the EA-18G Growler for electronic warfare, E-2 Hawk A for early warning operations, and the C-2 Graham for transport. On the rotorcraft front, the carrier supports SH-60 Seahawk helicopters. The MQ-25 Stingray refueling drone is currently being integrated, paving the way for future deployment of reconnaissance and attack drones, possibly including revivals of previously cancelled programs like the X-47B. Faster, smarter ordnance handling systems. To match the increased launch tempo, CVN-79 is fitted with 11 advanced weapon elevators powered by electromagnetic motors. These elevators, capable of moving up to 24,000 pounds of ordnance at speeds up to 150 feet per minute, revolutionize how munitions are delivered to waiting aircraft. The smart design ensures that elevators don't cross aircraft movement paths, which reduces hangar congestion and minimizes risks during high traffic operations. By cutting the time it takes to arm aircraft from hours to mere minutes, the Kennedy maximizes its sortie potential making it a lethal force multiplier in extended combat operations. Smarter Surveillance with Enterprise Air Surveillance Radar One of the key distinctions between CVN-79 and its predecessor is its new Enterprise Air Surveillance Radar System. This system replaced the more complex and costlier dual-band radar originally designed for the now-cancelled Zumwalt-class destroyers. The Enterprise Air Surveillance Radar System retains full effectiveness while offering simpler logistics, reduced training needs, and significant cost savings over $350 million, though some may mourn the loss of the advanced DBR system developed by Raytheon. The move towards standardization and scalability gives the Navy more agility across platforms. Layered defenses and preparing for hypersonic threats. Kennedy's defense systems include a formidable mix of missiles and guns. It is outfitted with evolved Sea Sparrow missile launchers, rolling airframe missiles, phalanx close in weapon systems, 25mm chain guns, and 50 caliber machine guns for close range defense. These systems are well suited to neutralize a range of aerial and sea based threats. Yet, in an age of hypersonic missiles like China's DF 21D carrier killer, traditional defenses may not be enough. To address this, the US Navy is experimenting with directed energy weapons combat lasers that could intercept incoming threats at the speed of light. While full scale shipboard deployment is still on the horizon, tests have already yielded promising results. In early 2025, the United States ship Preble successfully destroyed a drone using Lockheed Martin's Helios laser system. Originally spotted aboard the vessel in 2022, Helios delivers 300 kilowatts of power close to the 500 kilowatts considered necessary to intercept hypersonic missiles. Thanks to the Kennedy's immense power reserves, integrating such systems is not just possible, it's probable. The road ahead for the supercarriers of the future. With more than 600 megawatts of power on tap, CVN-79 can support high-energy weapons, advanced electronic systems, and next-gen propulsion technologies. Its design is not just about firepower. It's about adaptability and long-term relevance. In an era defined by rapid technological change, the U.S. Navy's strategy is clear. Build platforms that are future-proof, modular, and powerful enough to handle what comes next.
Construction of the United States ship John F. Kennedy continues at Newport News Shipbuilding, and the vessel is scheduled for commissioning before the end of 2025. According to the U.S. Navy's 30-year shipbuilding plan, 2025 to 2054, the goal is to grow the fleet to 381 crewed vessels, including 12 supercarriers, 10 of which will be Ford class. If you enjoy diving into the future of naval power, don't forget to hit that like button. Got thoughts on the relevance of aircraft carriers in modern warfare? Drop them in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe for more deep dives into military tech and global defense trends.